it's interesting turn of events to say the very least. I don't think anybody saw that coming. Uh, so yeah, the the field has been whittled down by one, and we'll see if uh, there's a fight for McDonald services or does Dan Quinn now become more of a realistic possibility for the Seahawks? I don't know. It's it's <laughs> it's not it's not going the way you thought it was going to go. Felt like all right, they're going to get the interviews out of the way, and maybe Wednesday, Thursday, McDonald lands in one spot, Johnson in the other. Yeah. Well, and it's kind of funny also that um, I was just kind of looking at numbers and it's down because somebody asked me, well, between the two, um, you know, who do you who do you want? And I go, well, one of them's already gotten a job or staying in Detroit. And I'm like, oh, that's right. I forgot about Dan Quinn. Yeah. And so I'm looking at their numbers. And if you look at as far as a, a defensive coordinator, and that's what we're going with on Mike Donald. That's all we're, we're going on. We don't know. I mean, we know he can coach that defense and his defense is really good. But if you look at total defense from last year dq was number five and mcdonald was number six and that's just total yards now you look at scoring they were number one Mm -hmm. um uh, mcdonald's defense number one and then dq in in dallas was number five and then as far as run mcdonald number 14 dq number 16 but then you look at pass uh Dan Quinn had a better pass defense. He was number five. McDonald was number six. So I don't know. I, I we're we're seeing this guy as this defensive wizard, and I and I think he is. And we'll talk about it and roll the tape. I think he's he's really good. But Dan Quinn's been getting it done for a long time. And and I was talking to Brent today, Brent Stecker, um, and on our digital side, and he was saying, you know, that Brock brought up a very good point as far as Dan Quinn goes. He's been in the league for a really long time. Mm-hmm. So. If you're trying to hire out a staff, you know, you know way more people. And, you know, DQ's been around it for such a long time. You know, that would be the other thing. Because right now, I mean, the Seahawks, they're running a little bit of a risk waiting this long. But if it's if it's Dan Quinn, I mean, I feel like he has the kind of connections and the kind of relationships with guys where he can be like, hey, I'm not sure if I'm going to get this job. Can you hold on for a little while? I think there's probably a lot of coaches that will say anything for you, man. So, so he's been around for a long time. We know that, you know, what kind of a person he is. And now all of a sudden it kind of brings that back to, hey, maybe we've, we're, uh, we're focusing too much on, on McDonald. I think I've been talking about him being, you know, the guy and, you know, kind of looking past Dan Quinn. Yeah, it, I think Quinn just – it's recency bias. We talked about it. The, the defense looked terrible in their loss in the playoffs. And – you like the shiny new toy. You like the unknown, the potential of a young guy that's 36, 37 years old and is going to be the next, you know, Shanahan. We want our we want our version of Shanahan. We want our version of McVay. And and to me, that's what the attraction to to Ben Johnson and Mike McDonald are. And and obviously they're they're they're, you know, offensive unit for the for the Lions and defensive unit for the Ravens are outstanding. So you get excited about what they bring to the table potentially as a head coach. And and you're right. I think Dan suffers in, in by the way of comparison because you kind of already know him. You're like, yeah, he's been there, and yeah, look what happened in Atlanta, and they choked away the Super Bowl, and blow. You can point to all the things he did wrong. Whereas these guys don't have that resume yet. They may do something worse. They may be terrible head coaches. Who knows? But they they don't have that sort of baggage, I guess, if you will. Of yeah, yeah, he had that shot in Atlanta, and look at how that turned out. Right. Well, and, and that's the thing you got to consider that there's no guarantee these guys are going to be, you know, these wizard head coaches. They're really good offensive and de- defensive coordinators. We know Dan Quinn, you know, as a coordinator, uh, went went to the Super Bowl, but also as a head coach, he took his team. So hey, I don't, uh, I, I think DQ is, and he's 53 years old. I guess that's old, right? I mean, compared to these guys who well, are compared their, to Pete and Belichick, he's just a spring chicken. Yeah, but compared to like these, <laughs> yeah, thirty six, thirty years old? something yeah. year olds, yeah, it's uh, he's kind of somewhere in the middle there. But I thought I thought that was a great point by Brock, just because this is the you know that's probably the most important thing that he'll do. I mean, I, once they get Dan Quinn hired, the most important thing is how are you going to fill in all your your coaches. And, you know, are they – because, you know, there there was a story about Raheem Morris, and it's like, yeah, they, they wanted to give him a second interview. They were really interested in him, but he's like, I got a bird in the hand, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I can't wait. And so, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of coaches that are kind of hanging around, and, you know, they've got to have uh, trust and faith in the guy like Dan Quinn who he gives them a, a gentleman's agreement and that you can trust that. 